The shocking truth, the financial industry is debt and taxes. Because 97% of the money in America is created by banks, someone must pay interest on nearly every dollar in the circulation. This interest redistributes money from the bottom 90% of the population to the very top 10%. The bottom 90% of the US pays more interest to banks that they ever receive from them, which results in a redistribution of income from the bottom 90% of the population to the top 10%. Collectively we pay $500 million every day in interest on personal loans alone, not including mortgages, and a total of $2 trillion a year in interest on all our debts. The entire money supply is effectively, on loan, from the banks. This means that interest must be paid on most of the money in the economy. This interest transfers income and wealth from the bottom 90% of the population to the very top 10%. By allowing our money to be created by banks as debt, we have created a system that guarantees that inequality will get worse. Money created by banks pushes up house prices. But it's the wealthiest who benefit most from these rising prices. For those on lower incomes, or younger people who haven't bought their first house, rising house prices push up the cost of living, leaving them with less disposable income and a lower standard of living. So rising house prices, fueled by money created by banks, makes the gap between the richest and the rest of us even bigger. A similar thing happens in the stock market. Money created by banks can fuel stock market bubbles, but because the wealthiest 5% of households own 40% of the assets in the financial markets, this benefits the very richest, and has limited benefit for everybody else. The gap gets even bigger. It is a transfer of money from the real economy to the bank's businesses are also in a similar situation. The, real, non-financial, productive economy needs money to function, but because all money is created as debt, that sector also has to pay interest to the banks in order to function. This means that the real economy businesses, shops, offices, factories etc. end up subsidizing the banking sector. The instability that the system causes means that temporary and low-paid jobs are insecure. When banks cause a financial crisis it leads to unemployment. It tends to be low-paid and temporary contract workers who are the first to get made redundant first, so that instability in the economy has a bigger effect on those on low incomes with insecure jobs. And when house prices are pushed up by banks creating money, those on low incomes suffer the most. People on low incomes often can't get a mortgage big enough to buy a house, so they don't benefit from the rise in house prices. Meanwhile, those who can get access to mortgages can buy multiple houses for buy to let in benefit from artificial inflation in house prices. Younger people also lose out, as the cost of buying their first house swallows an ever larger amount of their income while older and retired people who own houses benefit. This all increases inequality across different income groups and between the young and old. Centrally issued money optimizes inequality, monopoly, cronyism, stagnation and systemic instability. Everyone who wants to reduce wealth and income inequality with more regulations and taxes is missing the key dynamic. Central banks' monopoly on creating and issuing money widens wealth inequality as those with access to newly issued money can always outbid the rest of us to buy the engines of wealth creation. History informs us that rising wealth and income inequality generate social disorder. If we don't change the way money is created, social disorder is inevitable. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. The economic collapse is already here. It's already here, they're just not televising it. They are not telling you about it. If you look at central bankers, they've never been right about any crash, any depression, any recessions ever. Bank failures are happening all over America. The bank run has started, for weeks now the Fed is bailing out the rotten bankers left and right. The Fed is easing restrictions, easing laws to eliminate what bankers need to do risky investing with your money. Your money, the money you put into savings or checking accounts that they're holding, they're gambling with it on derivatives. So what's happening is that bankers are in trouble, they're not liquid they don't have cash. Bank to bank lending called the repo hit up to almost 10%, which is crazy when interest rates at all time low almost at 0%. In America, we never had interest rates this low before. What I want you to pay attention to is what happened in 2006, in 2006, 
there were zero bank failures, and then in 2007, there were three bank failures. And then it went to 25 bank failures in 2008. Now what I want to show you right now is 2018 has zero bank failures in 2019 has three bank failures. This looks like the exact same thing that's happened 11 years ago. Then, what is going to happen in 2021? First, it was Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and now Capital One. They're all going down for many days. Is this a show? Is this a test run? This doesn't look natural to me. We have a repo crisis, a liquidity crisis, a pension crisis, a sovereign debt crisis, a monetary crisis, and a crisis of the democratic model with mounting turmoils and ever-increasing separatist movements around the globe. He who panics first, panics best. Capital One Bank went down for hours. The banks are down. This is the third bank in just a few months that's been totally down. We had Wells Fargo a couple of months ago that was totally down, and then we had Bank of America, it was entirely down. And now it's Capital One that is down. And by all means no word of it in the news. Guess what? Thousands of people failed to gain access to their money to pay rent, or to buy food or to buy lunch or pay for their gas, because their system was all down. Now is this a coincidence? This is the third freaking bank in less than a couple of months that has been totally down. Are they getting hacked? Is this occurring due to the repo market? Or because there's no liquidity? That's why the Fed is bailing out these banks of the tune of 150 billion, not millions, but billions a day, every day. That is a bail to these rotten banksters at 150 billion per day. So which bank is the culprit? We really do not know if this is Bank of America, Wells Fargo, or Capital One. We don't know if it is Deutsche Bank. They are not allowing us to know. Although this is our money that's within of these banks, so in less than six months, we have had three substantial banks go blackout, and there's really no clarification of how is this happening. Saving your hard-earned money in a bank, how stupid is that? Just as in 1950s America, three of the top largest banks in America right now go dark without any clarification. The bank run has actually started. That's why we have the repo market. This time the Fed doesn't have the mini stimulus to inject the patient, the economy to survive because they're already at all-time low interest rate they already you know or be queuing money they're already belling out banks as reported by to Bloomberg. Global banks are inadvertently stocking up on risky corporate loans as a result of investors starting to slash risk in the credit markets. Barclays and Deutsche Bank are complicated bankers, but last to see investors getting ready for the recession and smart money leaving markets. Billions are small when taking into account $70 trillion in negative yield bonds that project vulnerability to every country. Bankers like politicians are too intricated with many forms of nepotism to see the forest. Wall Street bankers are money-loving people hating psychopaths who control the government and laugh at the tragic consequences of their behavior. I cannot remember ever having repos and 0% interest rates at the same time. How can we have a shortage of liquidity, when at the same time, money is being loaned at that sort of low rate? What this means to me is, money is going out quicker than it's going in, and without the repos, they would have defaulted on their payments, generating a confiscation. Do you want a timeline? How about when the repos end? I honestly don't see an exit out of this without some kind of default or bail-in. Quantitative easing is not any more working, and the banks can't borrow any more money. At a particular point, there will be a big bank failure or multiple failures, which will include at the very least some kind of a bail-in and supposedly some sort of bailout, even though they might name it something else. When and which banks is still to be disclosed. The repos are the last line of protection. Debt wrecks everything. It created the 100 years war and the war of the roses going back when. Being underwater with debt meant war. Real history widescreens this quite elegantly. Most currencies in the world are based exclusively on debt. They all have to be loaned into existence. It is the craziest proposition the world has ever known, and its supporters are the quintessence of evil. Today the US total debt is over $206 trillion. Let me just explain this to you. The primary dealers buy bonds from the treasury, thus funding the government with cash. The Fed buys bonds from primary dealers for money to primary dealers. It is a reimbursement tool since the first deal by law must purchase treasuries. This process doesn't increase liabilities against deposits. This does not cause monetary inflation. 
it only grows government agencies with bloated budgets, which in turn puts the brakes on economies. If this were not the case, the Soviet Union would still be here. The fractional reserve is what increases liabilities and deposits, monetary inflation, so long there is a high demand for loans. With low order, you have negative rates. The fractional reserve works in reverse. Unlike 2008, the Fed has insured the repo markets with an unlimited supply of digital US dollars as insurance. When it comes to creating digital dollars versus people dying of mass default, who do you think will win? The US had abused a privileged position which no other country has had aside from perhaps the UK during the time of the British Empire and when it was at the top of the financial food chain. The only reason why deficits and debts don't seem to matter to the US is that the only way to change this destructive behavior now is to allow it to implode under its own weight. The rest of the world watches as all the rules that apply to it now all of a sudden doesn't apply to the US, and more and more countries are therefore starting to distance themselves from the US. The sound bites coming from US officials sound so arrogant and delusional that it is starting to anger everyone. Americans believe somehow that they are entitled to get a free ride from the rest of the world while claiming the rest of the world is taking advantage of the US. It is, in fact, the height of arrogance, and this will, at some point, swing back and hurt the US dramatically. The Fed is lending to the federal gov by buying up its debt, hand over fist. Is new money created, not really? Bank A sells its treasuries to the Fed. The Fed credits the bank's account at the Fed. What really happened is the federal government borrowing via treasuries and other paper is off the market and sitting on the Fed's balance sheet. The market has been relieved of the burden of government borrowing. This smacks of MMT. The idea is hidden in the tactic, but it still seems to be in line with MMT. The more the government deficit spends, the more the money flows to the people. And there is approval of this tact by two groups. Those long the stock market, those in government were doing the spending. Gone is the discussion of responsible debt ceiling management and concern over the deficit. This is not a coincidence. It seems to have been decided, all at once and by agreement, that these things no longer matter. Frightening. Why the name of the program, Operation Matters to so many only shows how we are in a phase of adamant denial. Finance and banking have come a long way from a century ago, and this industry will never admit that they are the problem. Today the notion of money, currency representing stored work and effort is completely gone, and the banker perspective that money, currency is nothing but debt has taken over. Without perhaps knowing what they've done, they have eroded or more aptly stated destroyed the very core idea that makes up a healthy and vibrant economy. Companies of medium and large scale no longer seek to expand and innovate but focus on how their stock price can be raised through all kinds of maneuvers like buybacks, alternative reporting, and corporate bond recycling programs. The financial industry, with its games of illusions and fakery, has metastasized into the real economy, and today nobody knows the actual value of anything anymore. It's all a gigantic Ponzi scheme or game of musical chairs where all participants know that they are only playing against the others, and the name of the game is just to stay alive longer than the other guy. From having been an industry that focused on screwing the little guy with absurd rates and fees, the financial industry today has all but abandoned this segment and instead are set on screwing each other. Anyone with a few working brain cells knows what this repo program is really all about. It's about keeping assets and collateral hidden from each other. The fight or war now is between the most important financial institutions, and they know some of them will be culled to save the rest once the recession kicks in. This administration is using this to ensure all of them keep pushing the markets higher even when it is utterly clear to everyone that the whole thing is a gigantic theater. The big question we should ask now is just how fragile this entire arrangement really is because it will not take a lot to push it all over and have a recession that will dwarf the last. The level of recklessness and arrogance showed towards ordinary people, and the real economy is staggering, but then again, we all know what is at stake here, the very survival of the US dollar. How to destroy your middle class and steal their wealth 101. Inflation. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same, or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. Ronald Reagan. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe.
And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.